So good morning for those who are joining us. Thank you for joining us as we as you um, we begin today's um, part two of today's webinar as we um, watch our colleagues join um, who've been waiting in the waiting room. So we'll just you know wait for a bit to have you all join and set up um, and as you come in this morning or this afternoon or this evening wherever you are in the world. So once again, um, as I said before, we, we formally begin the session and, and um, I guess we can start recording if it's not already recording. Um, today we'll be have, we will have part two of our webinar discussion on the Universal Digital ID and the birth of the e-stamp uh, hosted and facilitated by, uh, well, hosted by the Dot Post Group. Uh, of which I am part of. My name is Tracy Hackshaw. I am the um, the manager of the Dot Post Business Unit. And today we have Sola Lavi, who is the co-founder and CEO of Geomain, who is a Dot Post Group associate member um, and also a member of the UPU Consultative Committee. And he is actually the only private sector member, wider postal sector player who is a member of both of our uh, private sector entities within the UPU. So welcome, Geomain, and welcome, Sol, for your, um, to the UPU's um, audiences as you present your, your solutions to us. Yesterday, as for those who are here yesterday, you may recall, we began by doing a sort of a business and high level overview of um, digital identity and what the GeoMain solution looks like from a business perspective. We talked about revenue, revenue opportunities. We talked about at a high level what the solution is doing in terms of functionality and features. But today, um, based upon even based upon the questions that we've gotten from yesterday, um, we've planned to do a deep dive, a technical deep dive into the solution and walking you through how it actually works. Um, and so we'll look potentially doing show you some scenarios so how it will work in an environment such as um, one that you may have as a postal operator or any other entity working in the postal supply chain. So while we um, settle ourselves and wait for um, our folks to join today, um, we had a quite a large group yesterday, but I, as usual, we normally expect today's session to be a smaller group because um, we have the technical folks today who are really very interested in the in the deep dive. Um, I would just essentially think that we can begin now. Um, so, yep, so I think this is a good time to begin formally. So with that, I will pass you over to Sua Lavi, who, as I said before, is the co-founder and CEO of Geomain. And I will probably let Sua, maybe it's a good idea for you to give another, just to those who are maybe new today, um, another view of what Geomain is about and a bit about yourself as well. So over to you, Sol. Great. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, pleasure to be here again uh, today. Uh, so uh, for those of you uh, who are joining us uh, again, uh, well, welcome and thank you for the joining us on the second day. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome. And uh, I would actually like Recording to in progress. Uh, start my... I, I, I would like to start my... A screen share uh, so I'll just set that up and just give me a second okay uh, can, can you see my screen uh, Tracy unfortunately we can't see your screen so compared to what we did when we were testing I don't know what, what has happened um, oh, we hold on. Uh, da, da, da. Let me stop and start again. This does happen at times, as we know. So just hold on. Okay. Yes, can you see the can. screen now, Tracy? Yes, I started again. Yes, we can, and I suggest you go into slideshow mode. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay, and you've got the full view now, right? 
We do. Yes. No, not yet. We actually just we're, okay. still, we're still seeing your slide deck. If you can yes. show us yeah. your slide show view um, presentation mode, please. Right. Okay. Hold on. Okay, so uh, today what we are going to cover is we are going to try to cover uh, some, um, uh, you know, some of these following topics. So we do, we, we will do a quick uh, recap of the GeoMain uh, Universal Digital ID. Uh, there is a short video, we will try to play that, uh, but I think we just tested it and for some reason the audio is not very clear, but uh, uh, Tracy will share the links for both the videos that we will be uh, showing during this presentation. So in case if you guys cannot hear the video, then uh, feel free to uh, uh, watch it directly using the links that uh, Tracy will share. Uh, we will also have a quick review of the app. So it will give you a good idea of exactly how the app works in terms of the uh, basically what it looks like, what the functionality is. Uh, we will uh, explain Geox, which is the first live use case of the GeoMain Universal Digital ID. So that would give you a very good idea of, uh, well, you know, of, of the first live use case uh, that we have developed for GeoMain. And, and I believe there will be countless more use cases that uh, third parties will be developing and will be running on the GeoMain platform in the future. Uh, we will then move on to discuss the eStamp infrastructure architecture. Um, and uh, we will then talk about its delivery model uh, in, in terms of uh, SaaS and how all of that works. Um, and we will then, uh, from there, with, uh, with regards to the services available within the GeoMain module, we'll actually go and uh, take you uh, live to the prototype that we have uh, for a postal operator, and we would be able to show you exactly how how that works. So uh, by the end of the presentation, you will have a very good idea of exactly uh, how, you know, what, what GeoMain is all about in terms of the architecture, um, how simple it is to actually integrate it and uh, to start working with it and obviously to start monetizing it uh, for the benefit of your respective uh, post. Um, and uh, you will also be able to see exactly how this whole thing will, uh, will work. Uh, so the person behind the counter at the post office, uh, or what will he or she be seeing on the screen and how will uh, he or she be able to actually uh, 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 be able to uh, sell geomains and renew them etc etc so um, uh, so one second, uh, uh, one second uh, you still have not been able to get it into present we have comments in the chat saying it's you're not seeing it in presentation mode so you're seeing all your menus you're seeing everything else uh, so can you just uh, oh, okay can you okay. just uh, presentation mode please It uh, okay. Let me let me just stop the screen share and start again. That might help because for some reason. Is this still screen sharing? No, we're not seeing the screen now. Okay, hold on. Yeah, let me, let, what I'm going to do is I'll actually uh, try and run this on the PDF thing because the PowerPoint does not seem to be working fine. So hold on just a second. Okay, uh, can you see the PDF now, Tracy? I'm not sure if you have two screens up, but we're still seeing your PowerPoint slide deck and it's still not in full screen mode. Okay. And I'm seeing the option to select full screen there. Okay, uh -huh. let me let me just close the PowerPoint altogether because it seems to be playing up. So you can, okay, can you see the PDF now? No. Your screen is not being shared. Oh, it's not shared now. Hold on. No, we're seeing you. Okay, can you see the PDF now? 
correct? And if you just hide that, um, you pay. thank you. Sure. Okay. Is 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 everybody be able to see the the first slide? Yep. And if you if you can go to full screen on this too, you know, let's go to the view and you'll get full screen. We'll really appreciate it. Thanks. Sure. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so, so uh, sorry about that. Okay. So uh, these are the topics that we will cover uh, this afternoon, uh, and uh, this is actually the video. So I'll try to uh, to play. Uh, you know, we actually try to play it, but for some reason the the voice is very low on this. So this is just a two minute video, which those of you who've actually uh, visited our website uh, would have already seen. Uh, so I'll skip this. But uh, for those of you who who wish to watch the video, it's available on our on the main website, georain.com and Tracy will also be sharing the link for this. So uh, this is uh, the uh, the app review. So these are the different uh, um, uh, screenshots that we've got for the app. So let's let's actually start with the first uh, shot there that you see. That's actually the home screen. So we've got the geo main on the top. Uh, so this is my own geo main, uh, Sol. Uh, you then have uh, a call in messaging feature, which by the way is a work in progress. So that, that's still a few weeks away before we actually get that enabled. Uh, the visible option there is for privacy. So at any time, if you wish that. If you wish to go invisible, you simply uh, click that visible button, and you'll have a have a little cross across that that eye symbol there, and uh, nobody would then be able to know where you are. Um, share your location, uh, so share push, uh, pushes your current location wherever you are, and then you can use any of the uh, uh, medium that you currently have provisioned on your device, be it WhatsApp, be it an email, be it anything, and you can share it with your friends, your your, your current location. So we send a link of where you are, and the radar feature, which is also uh, still work in progress, is, uh, is 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 a very unique feature, which actually is able to uh, tell you which of your specified friends are uh, within is uh, within uh, a, a radius of about two kilometers uh, from you. So if you wish to hook up with anybody, then you can do that. Uh, then you come down to the next field that's enter geomain and phone. Uh, so when you click that button, then the second screen there shows. So you can actually uh, either search for your contacts, uh, your friends or even businesses using their geomain or using a phone number. So uh, most of us have uh, have contacts provisioned at this moment with a phone number. So those who will have a phone number provision and who are already existing uh, geomain uh, members, uh, they will actually have the geomain shown, and those who are not will have an invite button next to it. Uh, going back again to the first screen, so we've got uh, five uh, five main menus there. So uh, we've got an explore, that's a home page. We've got uh, the geomain, uh, which we'll come to in a second, and then contact services and profile. So uh, what you see on the home screen is actually uh, a, a current location map of where you are. And once the radar feature works, then you would be able to see uh, little uh, icons that will uh, show those friends that you have uh, wished to track uh, using the radar feature. Uh, they will show uh, once they're in close proximity to you. Now we move on to the third screen. So the third screen is 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 about geomains. So the, uh, so first is geomains because uh, people will register more than one geomains. Perhaps one for the business, one for personal use. Uh, so uh, depending on whichever geomains you actually own, all those geomains will show on your geomains tab. In this particular case, uh, so if you look at the first geomain there, so I've registered a free geomain called sol123.my. And I've got that little link icon there, and I've got these, uh, you know, my geospots showing in a scroll bar fa uh, format. So that means that uh, anytime that I wish to update my geo main uh, location to any specific geospot, uh, usually uh, places that I would be frequenting, um, uh, you know, more than once, then I would simply have to be able to go and update my geospot, uh, uh, update my geo main by linking my geospot to my geo main. So um, uh, the, this is a very convenient way of doing it. Uh, and if you wish, then obviously once you actually create a GeoSpot, you're also able to, at that time, uh, link it uh, to your GeoMain. Uh, so you have that option when you create your GeoSpot that link, link this link this GeoSpot to my current uh, GeoMain. So then it will automatically link without you having to do this step. Uh, the next, uh, and uh, which is the fourth and the last screen is uh, a, Geospots, uh, so you can have as many geospots as you wish, uh, totally free of cost. And geospots are really 
uh, your favorite locations that you visit. It could be a cafe, it could be, uh, you know, your, you know, your office, it could be any, any, any other uh, location, you know, your uncle and aunt's house, your home, whatever. And these names are non-unique, so uh, you could have uh, these names uh, pretty much, you know, common across uh, most geomain users. So the important thing to remember is that the geomain itself is unique. There's only one geomain uh, of, of its type and uh, geospots uh, are not unique names. They are simply labels uh, that can then uh, link to a geospot. So they also uh, on your geospots uh, page, which is the last screen, uh, you see there are these little uh, icons uh, below every single geospot. So what you're able to do is uh, if you uh, wish uh, to navigate to a specific geospot, so you just pull it up and you click on the navigation button. And depending on whichever uh, mapping provider you have uh, chosen, uh, then, then that map opens up. Currently we support both Google Maps and Gear Maps. In the future, we plan to be supporting uh, uh, other national mapping services as well. So, for example, in Singapore, we've got uh, uh, 1SG, uh, uh, you know, and, 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 and many other countries have got their own national mapping, like in the UK, we've got the Ordnance Survey, etc. So, um, those, those, those national mapping providers will also be supported in due course, but at this moment, we are supporting uh, both Google and Air Maps, which are the two largest mapping providers uh, currently available. Uh, if you click on the second icon, then what happens is uh, we are currently uh, uh, partnering with Uber. So uh, um, for those countries where Uber exists, uh, your Uber app will open and uh, you will then come straight to the screen where you uh, can see the price of uh, the ride that you have booked. So it's going to price the ride from your current location to uh, wherever the geospot is. And in one additional click, you are able to uh, have the Uber at your doorstep. Um, we are uh, in the process of trying to sign up with uh, other ride hailing companies, uh, including some national ones. Uh, and obviously this is something that will happen progressively as, uh, you know, over a period of time. Uh, but currently we are, we are uh, as I said, integrated already with Uber and uh, also with Grab. Uh, the integration is currently in process. Uh, we expect that to take a few weeks before we are able to offer Grab, which is Asia's version of Uber. Uh, they're the largest ride hailing uh, in this part of the world in Southeast Asia. Uh, the share icon there is where I would like to share a geospot with a friend of mine. So let's say I visit a cafe and I really like it. So I, I'm able to, in one click, share this geospot with a friend and he or she is then able to add this geospot on their uh, geomain app and they, they are then able to navigate to it and do anything else that they wish. Uh, and uh, the last link icon there is if I wish to link a, geo, a geospot with my, with my current geomain. So I could do it either from the third screen, which is a geomain screen, or I could even do it from the geospot screen. So uh, typically people would have hundreds of geospots, uh, so it would be easier for them to just scroll down to the respective geospot that they would like to link and click on that link button and they're able to link it to the geo main of choice. Uh, so yeah, this is the right healing thing. So as you know, as I mentioned, so as I said, Uber at the moment is enabled, Grab is in process. Uh, we are talking to some of the others and this is uh, something that's work in progress and we expect that to happen over, you know, over the next few weeks or months. Uh, the My Contacts uh, screen is uh, very important to have a look at because we've uh, tried to uh, be a bit innovative in this. Uh, so um, uh, what happens is we've got a, a category essentially. So you've got uh, all your contacts, we've got friends, family, and then we've got groups. Um, if you look at this, uh, we, at, at the second screen, uh, so here uh, what we've said is we've said, well, there's a there's a contact called geomain.sg and uh, uh, Next to each contact is this uh, down arrow. If you look at the second geomain on the list there, it's called laurie.gb, uh, lauriestar.gb. So you, uh, you see there's this, uh, uh, there's this down arrow over there. So that's essentially opens a dashboard. The dashboard looks like uh, uh, the, uh, the icons just above laurie.gb. So once you click that down arrow, then this dashboard opens. And uh, from here, you're able to chat to that person. You're able to make a call. You're able to make a video call. Uh, you're also able to uh, determine their current location in terms of where they are insofar as they have uh, allowed you to track them. And you're able to navigate to their geomain wherever that is provisioned. So uh, all of these core functionalities can be done very conveniently from within the My Contacts uh, 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 screen. Uh, we also have um, a little icon over there uh, 
which is the globe icon. So that represents a geo page. So every single uh, geo main uh, owner, be it a business or a, a consumer, has got a, a what we call a geo page. And that geo page is essentially information on themselves, their profile. Uh, and we plan to add additional exciting stuff like blogs and uh, stuff like that as you know uh, as uh, as you move forward um, so at, at the moment the geo page is 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 alive and it's supported and for consumers uh, uh, we've got a uh, we, you know the, the 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 photo and the profile information and for businesses we are now uh, soon going to be introducing uh, advertising so uh, geo main uh, geo page owners who own business category geo mains will be able to actually uh, serve uh, banner ads as well as uh, video ads uh, within their geo pages and that again is going to be a significant revenue uh, perhaps uh, over a period of time uh, you know uh, I dare to say it could even uh, be the, the largest uh, revenue component across the entire revenue mix that post that post offices would be uh, earning uh, as, as a geo main partner uh, and finally there are those, these little emojis that you see uh, uh, against each contact. So this is basically a moves feature that we've got. Um, and uh, again, this is just one thing that we're doing to try to make this app very sticky because we understand that Geomain being a digital ID app, uh, the use cases of this are, 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 are you know, from, uh, several uh, but however uh, the the app in itself people may not be frequenting it that often so we've actually thrown this feature in uh, in order to um, make it a bit sticky so you're able to go and actually set your mood so if you're in a in a mood for coffee for example then uh, i don't have to call you and ask you hey are you you know are you free for coffee should we go out i just scroll my contacts list and see who's in the mood for coffee and i can uh, you know just just chat to you or call you from within the same screen and uh, set up a time and a place to meet you for coffee uh, so so that's that's basically the contacts uh, screen uh, services is the uh, fourth icon that we have at the bottom in the menu uh, we've got an emergency services thing on the top and this is a uh, you know for in, in case of emergency as we as, as we all know we've got uh, a huge problem in most countries where you typically make a phone call and then you have to wait for several minutes before somebody answers uh, and then in a state of panic it, you know it could take several minutes which are absolutely crucial and critical in any emergency uh, for you to simply get across the fact uh, to the other person at the uh, you know who's, who's operating the emergency services uh, to, to get across to them what the problem is so so we thought that well, uh, maybe this is a faster way of dealing with the whole issue uh, where we can do it in, 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 in uh, you know, less than a minute. Uh, we can select the emergency service we require. We can, at that, uh, at that immediate instance, we can take a photo, take a video, record a voice uh, message, or just write whatever we want. So, for example, if there's a street fight going on, I just write street fight and I can take a photo and I can basically just click the button, uh, the button at the bottom that's notify emergency services. Um, in, in case of, let's if it's in a, a, a god forbid if it's a medical emergency or something with myself then i can click that little thing that says notify my next of kin now so i have a feature where i can manage my next of kin contact so let's say if uh, uh, anything is uh, you know happens god forbid a medical emergency uh you know then within seconds my family is informed the emergency services are informed and if i so choose i can auto link my primary geo into my current location so if anybody wishes to uh uh, you know reach me uh, in my time of need then they can do so uh, by just clicking one button so that's that's on the emergency services side on the other uh, services side uh, this is another uh, concept that we've got in terms of making geomain a gateway app because it is a digital id app so what we uh, what we uh, would like and, and and we feel would be interesting to a lot of the uh, vendors would be to come in and sign up as partners over here so what would what that would actually enable is it would enable uh, people for example if you were to click on excuse me if you were to uh, if you were to uh, click on the food delivery icon there and, and I'm on the third screen services. So if you were to click on that on that icon, then what would happen is you would end up showing all these different uh, food delivery companies that, uh, you know, that would be our partners like uh, Uber Foods or uh, Food Panda, etc. And uh, if I want to order from there, I should be able to do so without actually having to create an account because if I'm coming through the Geomain app, then Food Panda or Uber Foods would automatically know who I am. So the whole convenience of 
being able to access services without going through that entire sign-up process is, I think, something that is uh, perhaps uh, unique and also uh, certainly very attractive, uh, you know, from a consumer's perspective and from a UX, uh, from a UX perspective. Uh, so these are just a, a list of selected partners we feel who may want to sign up uh, for these kind of services, and uh, um, integrating them is not a, a major issue from a tech side. It's uh, it, it's really making the business case to them uh, in terms of uh, them being able to enhance their customer base uh, that would then hopefully get them to sign up to these, uh, you, know, get, you know, to be a service provider within the GeoMain app. Um, Okay, so we'll move on to the next screen now. <clears throat> These are the profiles. So we've actually got a public profile. So uh, again, for, for, for privacy reasons, uh, uh, here, this is where we can actually choose a motto. We can uh, choose a name and we can choose a photo and, and, and select our mode. Uh, if we so wish, we can actually have a ultra privacy mode activated where none of this information will, will be made available. But if uh, you wish to, this is pretty much like uh, domains have got the who is feature where we can find some information about the domain registrant. So similarly, this is all the information that is available um, if you choose to make it public. If you choose to basically make uh, your public information uh, totally uh, anonymous, then absolutely nothing will show and it will just show that this problem, that that this profile is private. Um, then uh, on, on the personal profile, we've got a feature called geocards. Uh, geocards are essentially uh, QR codes, uh, which map to your existing geomain, but which would have different uh, data. So um, hypothetically, let's say if I'm working at uh, two or three different companies and I would wanna have uh, two or three different uh, business cards, if you may. So I can actually go and create two or three different uh, geocards as we call them here. And these geocards are, uh, are then, you know, I can, I, I, they would, they would all link to the same geomain, um, but they will be, they, you know, they can have different data. So they can have different email addresses, different phone numbers, different, uh, uh, you know, different emails. Uh, and, and again, I can share them by simply uh, showing somebody, look, this is my QR code. They scan it using the GeoMain app and they're automatically in one click added as a contact. Uh, uh, on their GeoMain app, and I'm added as a, uh, uh, they are added as a contact on my GeoMain app. So uh, all contacts within the GeoMain app are are are, at, are added on a reciprocal basis uh, in order to be fair and in order to make sure that uh, uh, you, uh, you know everything remains uh, very private. So uh, once I actually, if I if I remove you as a contact uh, from my uh, address book, then uh, then the dead then my details on your address book would also be deleted. So it is strictly on a reciprocal basis. Uh, so this is that uh, coming to the third screen, which is the My Profiles. Uh, this is the security uh, button where if you click on that button, it says uh, only your contacts can view your page, navigate, and or call or video call to. The last is the settings page, which as I said, we've currently got um, uh, here maps and Google Maps provisioned. Uh, we support both of these. Uh, we also have uh, the app currently exists in about 15 different languages. Um, and uh, we, we hope we'll be adding more as we go along. But at the moment, uh, the app is available in 15 languages. And on that note, also important to state that uh, Geomain itself, which is what I said yesterday, uh, that, you know, we. We, we actually support seven different character sets, but we only enable English at the moment. Uh, so over the next uh, couple of months, perhaps we'll be uh, enabling uh, geomains in other languages uh, as well. So you will have, be able to have a geomain, for example, in the uh, Mandarin language or in the Arabic language. Uh, and uh, they too would obviously have a matching uh, geomain QR code. So um, this would help geomain become, uh, you know, have universal adoption. Okay, so the first live use case for Geomain uh, Universal Digital Identity is actually uh, a, a single sign-on solution. Uh, we call it a Universal Single Sign-On or USSO. Um, uh, and uh, GEOFS, uh, basically the, the double X uh, signifies a, a signature, which means essentially authentication by the user. Um, and uh, our, our motto of live life password free, because we because with, with GEOFS, uh, we can actually get rid of the password, uh, which, uh, I, which is going to be a major boon uh, because uh, everybody has had issues with passwords as we know. So uh, again, I'm not gonna run this, I'm not gonna attempt running this video because the voice is very faint. So uh, please feel free to either visit the website 
at geox.co. The, the, the video is there and you can watch the video and see exactly how it works uh, or else uh, um, Tracy would be happy to share the links uh, with you guys as well. Right, this is the Geox uh, architecture, so we'll just uh, quickly delve on this. So um, uh, Geox has its own separate cloud. It basically uh, uh, operates using a Geox Authenticator app. So uh, once you actually have a Geomain app, you then download a Geox Authenticator app, and all authentications uh, and notifications will actually come on your Geox Authenticator app. So um, uh, every time that you wish to sign in to a, a web or a app that actually supports Geox uh, USSO or Geox Universal Single Sign-On, uh, that notification would come on your uh, device uh, using the Geox Authenticator app and not the Geomain one. Um, so we've done that primarily because uh, Geomain obviously is, uh, is a digital identity, so Geox being just a use case, one use case of that digital identity. So we did not want to uh, confuse or mix these things up, so it's, so it's kept separate. We also have a Geox partner module. Uh, so these are partners that use the Geox USSO and we've got a Geox STP, which is a service delivery platform as well as part of the Geox cloud. Um, we will very quickly do, uh, also have a look at the architecture on the right hand side. This is the Geomain architecture. So we've got the Geomain master registry. Uh, we have uh, what we call a Geomain STP, which is a service delivery platform and that has got uh, several applications. So we've got things like uh, uh, cost terminal ads, we've got opt-in marketing campaigns, uh, address verification services. So, so all of these are things that the STP can actually handle and it, that, that could be uh, customized or curated for specific partners based on their needs. Uh, the eStamp um, cloud is separate and that is the one that uh, will eventually link to the UPU. And uh, as you can see over there, uh, what will most likely happen uh, or what we would like to see happen is that every country actually has their own uh, servers uh, which basically host the customer eStamp transaction data um, within the uh, national borders. So, um, and, and, and there'll be more on this, I believe, in the next uh, few slides. So we'll discuss this in detail there. Okay, so the eStamp model and infrastructure architecture, easiest to understand is that domain names have changed the world and how we live, work, and play. Uh, we know that uh, both ICANN and Geomain are essentially registrars of a unique alphanumeric name and are complementary to each other. So uh, we are not competitive in any nature. Uh, ICANN has its own unique role um, and uh, they've got an, an, an entire global uh, infrastructure, which is uh, both uh, hardware and software. Um, uh, we are primarily software only, but we ride on that infrastructure. So uh, it's very important to uh, appreciate that difference, uh, which I'm sure the, uh, anybody uh, from, from tech would, would be able to do very easily. Uh, the model, as I said yesterday, is uh, it's free for consumers and businesses pay a small annual fee to register their choice of domain name just as, to, as they do for domain names. So uh, this is uh, this is actually an ICA, a diagram from ICANN. So it shows uh, how the actual setup is done um, and, and how the registrars and uh, the ICANN registrars are uh, pretty much, uh, you know, the likes of GoDaddy's and uh, Namecheap, et cetera, et cetera. So how these, how these registrars actually connect to ICANN. Uh, so what we are uh, trying to highlight here in this particular diagram is that the Geomain master registry keeps an authoritative master database of all Geomain names globally. Uh, and uh, this is the one that's going to be uh, outside in the cloud. And this connects, uh, to the registrars, which in this case would be the post offices. Uh, so uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to replace essentially in this in this diagram, we're trying to say that, look, instead of the registrars uh, who are making millions of dollars every year, as we know, uh, we would like the post offices to actually monetize this opportunity and be able to, uh, uh, to, to act as a registrar uh, for the geomain. Okay. Uh, <laughs> This is a very high level architecture. So uh, again, uh, so we've got the Geomain master registry. Uh, we this, this would probably be on a multi-cloud environment, uh, mirrored and geographically distributed for maximum redundancy and data security. Um, and just, just to be clear, this Geomain master registry would simply only have uh, about five pieces of information. One is the Geomain, uh, 
the second is uh, second and third are the, are the first and uh, first and last names of the user. Uh, the third would be the MSISDN or otherwise, uh, as, as we call it, the cell phone number of, of, of the user to whom the GeoMail is registered to. And finally, an email address. Uh, but however, the way that GeoMail is designed that, uh, you know, you could, you, once you've actually registered a GeoMail using a phone number uh, and an email ID, you, you are then free to update your phone number and email ID at any time in the future. So your GeoMail can stay the same uh, even if your phone number changes and even if your email ID changes, right? There's a process for you to actually update that information. Uh, and once you've done that, uh, then your information can remain current and you can be reachable uh, by anybody that you so wish. Then uh, country uh, country next. This is an uh, this is a uh, and uh, I think a very important uh, uh, piece of the whole uh, um, architecture. And in some countries, we feel that the network information centers, uh, which currently manage the domain, the local domain uh, TLDs. So, for example, uh, in I mean in Singapore, it's it's, it's dot sg. Uh, you know, in the UK, it's dot gb, etc. So uh, these 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 uh, NICs have an inherent interest in in, in perhaps hosting uh, national data because most of these are actually government owned uh, bodies that look up the uh, in, uh, you know, national interests. So uh, in in those countries where uh, Post uh, decides that they do not want to host uh, local data, we could have the uh, the local country mix. Uh, hosting the data locally. So again, uh, to, to, to reinforce my earlier point, uh, uh, you know, we are moving towards a world where everybody wants to have data with the national borders. Uh, we are in support of that policy and uh, uh, we feel that that next will play a crucial role moving forward. Uh, uh, but if the post offices want to take on this responsibility and uh, therefore be able to monetize it at, at any point in the future in, in any fashion that they so choose, then uh, we are open to that as well. Uh, then, then uh, the service delivery platform is there, which is got a variant, which basically, obviously, is all protected by firewalls everywhere. So there's, uh, we we've got all the security built in that that is necessary today, and uh, these then connect to specific uh, applications, be the logistics, ride hailing, uh, registrars, map providers, government, or whatever. Uh, we we'll move to the next slide now. So this is again pretty much another uh, so slightly more detailed. Uh, uh, version of the earlier slide, but here uh, what we stress on is uh, again the country NICs and and here we are actually able to show where the East stamp comes in, in in all of this. So the UB admin panel will have a full overview of all transaction metadata globally. So we propose uh, to actually give the UPU access, uh, i.e. a dashboard where they can view uh, all the movements of uh, of, of all mail everywhere around the world, so they'll be able to have, if a you know full picture, uh, uh, which which they can do, uh, uh, which, you know, which I'm sure they could do it, because it's going to help give them that level of uh, insights uh, which they have not have uh, have had till today. Uh, so it it gives a granular analytical analysis capabilities and oversight, which would then help uh, them to develop policies that would help to further enhance efficiencies across post globally. Um, so uh, again, the customer East Time transaction data should reside on local servers within the respective postal authority of every country. And if they choose not to do that, then it could be the next that could come in and play that role. Okay, this is a schematic diagram of pretty much everything that we've done. So um, since this is a deep dive, I'd be happy to review this. And uh, so we've got the end users uh, some there on the left-hand side. So that's customer access to services via web or app. Uh, primarily, it is it, it is going to be the app, however. Um, then we've got the GeoMain gateway servers. Uh, so we've got the mediation servers and we've got the local GeoMain registry. So within, within each post office, we would be able to position a local GeoMain registry and by that we mean that all geomains registered within a specific country, uh, i.e. those with a specific country suffix. So 
you know, if 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 you if you register a geomain with a .sg suffix, then uh, that means that uh, that that's the Singaporean geomain, and it will then reside within uh, so within a, within servers or at at Singpost. Um, so uh, so a, a local geomain registry is very critical, so, and and what this is going to help with this is going to help resolve all uh, national traffic, if you may, uh, within the country without anything going outside. Right. Um, it's only when you actually need to be able to resolve uh, international geomains uh, or geomains that do not have a country suffix that you would then need to connect to the uh, geomain uh, cloud, which is right there on the top, the geomain master registry uh, you see there. And only then you are able to actually uh, send them a query and they'll get back to you in terms of exactly where the geomain is. Uh, but if it's uh, if it's national traffic, then it, it should, uh, you know, it, it should be structured in a way that all of that can be handled uh, locally, uh, you know, within national borders. We would also have a, 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 a service delivery platform provision uh, nationally, uh, you know, it, it's, just, it's essentially the same piece of software, uh, but uh, geographically uh, distributed, if you may. Um, and uh, Geomain Gateway servers are co-located in every country's NIC data centers or, or, or postal data centers, as I earlier mentioned, assuring local ownership of national Geomain registry and location data. Uh, the post office uh, servers are, are there on the right hand side. So transaction app data for services provisioned on the Geomain SDP reside on local post office service. So it could happen in two ways. One is where if, if a NIC comes in, they could take ownership uh, of all data and in return, they are able to host all that data. If the post office wishes to share that, then they could basically even share that where uh, transaction app data for e-stamps, for example, uh, could be uh, residing within the post office's own servers and all of the data that is uh, uh, basically generated by users in that country can then resolve, uh, you know, can then reside in the national uh, NIC servers. So uh, all of this is really flexible because it is technology so we can do whatever really works for every country and we understand that uh, every country has different needs and requirements and we are happy to accommodate that, to accommodate these as, as best we can. Uh, and finally, the UPU has a, uh, you know, the last is a UPU. So the UPU has a bird's eye, view, a bird's eye view of all postal activity and, and analytics, which uh, I believe, as I said, would be of great value to them in helping to uh, further develop policies that would uh, increase profitability and efficiencies for postal operators worldwide. Okay, uh, this is the delivery model. So this is where I'm going to actually, uh, uh, I'm, I'm I'm going to switch over and show you exactly how this works in real time. Uh, so you just give me a second, please. Okay, uh, Tracy, can you see that screen where it says Jumin Registrar? Yes, we can. Yes? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. So this is really the registrar module. So, uh, so uh, the, the the geomain registrar module helps to manage and register geomains. In addition to that, we can update category ad terms, manage ads from from registrars, etc. So uh, the way that we sign up to this is we basically enter a geomain. So let let me enter my geomain here. Now this is. Uh, this is in real time. So uh, actually, what I'd like to do is I would like to very quickly just switch over to. Uh, to the camera so you guys can actually see uh, the device notification come in. So, uh, so I've entered, I've, I, I've entered the uh, Sol here and I'm going to very quickly click on the sign in and then I'm going to, um, and then I, I will immediately stop the screen share so you guys can see the notification come in and you can see me swipe it so you see how easy this is. So done that and now I'm going to stop the sharing. Okay, can you guys can you guys see see my screen now? Sorry, can you see me? Hello. Yes, we can, can see, see you. Me? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, if you see this this notification just came in on my device, uh, right? So I'm I'm on the Geomain app and I've gotten this little notification because I've entered Sol on there and it's asking me to swipe to confirm that I am the one who's actually signing into this. So I will do that right now. So as soon as I've signed in, right? 
let's 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 go back and there you go it's now giving me access to this so it's signed me in so this is exactly how all sign in is going to happen uh, for the geomain registrars uh, because we are not going to be relying on emails which as we know are inherently insecure so um, the, the way that this will work is if you look at this uh, dashboard uh, sorry uh, can you see my screen now Tracy sorry not yet Okay, hold on. Okay, you see my screen now? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay, so you see this, uh, you see this, uh, the, the, uh, this dashboard, uh, Jomin registrars. So uh, once I swiped yes, then it granted me access to this post module. And what I'm able to do here is uh, uh it, it opens on the dashboard page now uh, uh you know i'm, I'm actually let, let me just show you this so manage post offices so I, here i can actually create a post office so when i click on create post office i may uh, because every country has got uh different post offices different numbers so we can create and identify post offices based on their unique uh, number we can get uh, edit those post offices we can delete the post office and within those post offices we can actually add employees edit employees and delete employees so this is where we would actually be able to add geo mains of employees who are who who would have access to the geo main registrar module that you're seeing in front of you uh, so um, when i want to actually uh, now let's say uh, let's say this is this is the screen that perhaps an, an administrator within the uh, post office would actually be seeing uh, but the uh, teller, the, the, the guy or the lady sitting at the counter would actually be seeing this screen when they sign in. So here I'm able to actually search for a geomain. So I'm just going to do a search on Sol again to show you guys that this geomain is already taken. Uh, and there it is. So it's, so it's actually showing me all the record for, for my thing. Now, once, let's say a customer comes in, I, I walk into a post office and I say, okay, look, uh, this is who I am, or this is my geomain, and I'd like to register an additional geomain. So I click on the register and I enter, let's say I want to, I want another geomain called Sol2. So it checks the availability, it says Sol2 is available now. I then have to select a category that is it a person, business or whatever. I select how many years I want it for. And then I click on the register icon and it's going to tell me, okay, this is the thing, this is the total price. Once I confirm, then what happens is this particular transaction is pushed to your payment gateway with the amount and you, the post office, are able to collect payment on this unique transaction, uh, sorry, on this transaction, which has a unique transaction ID number and you are able to basically collect the payment uh, and, 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 you know, move on. So, uh, this is this is how uh, uh, your you know people uh, within within your uh, post offices would actually be able to register new joins. Now now let's say if I want to manage a geomain, so I can update the category. So I, so let's say if I decided, oops, I've actually gotten the wrong category. It shouldn't be business. Uh, you know, it's it's now something that I I want it to be. Uh, I want it to be a personal geomain, or uh, you know, then I basically switch to person, and I can change the category uh, and. There's a transaction fee involved in that. And again, by clicking that button, I'm able to make that payment and the category is updated. Uh, so uh, I, I, I can, uh, uh, you know, I can add terms here. So again, I select, okay, fine. So I want to add another five years to this. So I update the terms. Five years would cost me this amount, for example, and the terms are updated, the, and, uh, you know, and, and the invoice is generated using your existing payment processor or whoever that may be. Uh, now this is the verify option, so I'm able to select, okay, this is a geomain, be it a business or a personal geomain. Um, so I'm, uh, you know, if it's a business, uh, in this particular case, this, this, this particular uh, is, is, is a personal geomain, so it's, it's asking for an ID card or a driver's license. I'm then able to enter the number for whatever that, that unique driver's license number is, and I can upload an image if I so choose, right? And then I can basically click on process verification, and it's going to say, please verify the details, and, and if they're correct, then again, I can build in a, a, a price here that the post office can decide that, that, you know, we want to charge $10 or $5 for this verification, whatever that is, and that amount would then be pushed again to your payment processor and the invoice issued and settled by the, uh, by the consumer. Services are uh, basically got to do with the advertising. So this is again going to be primarily for the business geomains. So um, 
this is why it says uh, select a business uh, domain. So again, if I've got multiple domains, all my domains will list here. As you can see, they are now listing. So I, I, I you know, I click on geo, uh, geo one dot uh, geo one dot us, right? I then select the ad type, whatever that is. So if it's a banner ad, embedded video, and video link. Embedded video is slightly more expensive because it actually runs uh, from within our own servers. Uh, and a video link is where you would give me a link to a YouTube video or uh, to a Vimeo video, and 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 we can run that. Uh, but uh, it is it is much more better for most businesses i believe to actually run an embedded video primarily because uh in the embedded video you can be absolutely sure there'll be no advertising let alone competitive advertising that would show up in the middle of your video so we all know that when you watch videos on uh, youtube uh, a lot of the times uh, you know uh, you're interrupted by ads and those ads may indeed sometimes be competitive thereby defeating the entire purpose of advertising so um uh, we, we do offer uh, um, the, the, the video link because it's a cheaper option and, and many people may still want to do it, uh, but uh, the way to go is really the embedded video. Uh, and then there's a standard banner ads. And then we select a term. So for how long do they want that campaign? And then again, proceed to payment. And once we proceed to payment, then it will actually show, you know, show us an amount and we are able to again, push that off to the payment processor. So this is really all that is going to, uh, that, that the teller at the post office or the, you know, the counter person will actually be seeing. And these are all the functionalities that they will be able to do uh, from within the geomain uh, module. Um, so there's a user profile, right? They can add, they can search, they can do all of that. They can basically register new geomains. They can basically manage existing geomains, update category, add terms, verify, and obviously the advertising, you know, which I've just uh, gone over. Um, and uh, this this part on the left that you see, this is a restricted view. It's going to be for the uh, post office, uh, uh, you know, headquarters really, who can then create all these different uh, uh, post offices and uh, then. Uh, Based on hierarchy, they are able to, uh, you know, create uh, who can uh, who can see what and and which page. And here is where they can then the post office has got centralized. Uh, the post office headquarters, sorry, would have a centralized uh, employee management uh, whitelist that they can from where they can add and delete and, and edit employees. And uh, there is also a logs feature which is not showing here, uh, but uh, you will be able to see exactly who is who's accessed. Uh, what module, what time they signed in, what time they signed up, and what was their activity. So this is, and and and, and all of this is, uh, again, uh, available as SaaS or software as a service. So it's all basically over a secure VPN uh, that you are then able to uh, basically offer all these services uh, to your uh, customers. So uh, that pretty much is uh, more or less the thing yeah okay uh um, white just label. One, okay just, this, this just, is... just one moment so we have two questions maybe, maybe before you move on please can... um so there are two questions sure. in the q a um gabriel from um, nigerian post asks if we have a digital postcode system which we are to launch soon how can it be integrated into the address verification system and then a second question from marianne how is a business verified? Okay. So let me answer the first question from Nigeria Post first. So if you have got any existing national postal system, uh, then what uh, um, then what the consumer can do is the uh, you know when you actually uh, when you actually uh, download the GeoMain app and when you create a GeoSpot, there is a little field on there uh, which says that uh, if you if you wish to enter the legacy addresses, then you can choose that. Or if you if you have a have a national addressing system, be it uh, you know some some countries call it short code, some call it whatever. So they can they they can enter that that piece of string inside the app. So what will happen is for every geo spot that you create, right? Mm -hmm. Every geo spot that you create, you can actually embed your national postal code or postal ID or short code, whatever you have, and you can do that from within the GeoMain app. And that can then be linked, if you so wish, to your GeoMain. Okay, so uh, does that answer my, answer your question? So I guess he'll, he'll put it in the chat. Um, the other question about the, uh, how is a business verified from Marianne Rowden? Okay. Uh, 
business verification will again come here under uh, uh, you know where you'll be able to click on this verify thing so when you click on this verify thing uh, for the businesses it will actually not show id card driving license password it just shows certificate of incorporation or proof of registration or something of the sort and you are then able to enter that that registration number whatever that is and you're able to upload a copy of that document um, and if you so wish uh, then uh, you know depending on if the local registration authority supports uh, such a feature um, insofar as they can provide an API we can actually do real-time verification as well so uh, hypothetically I could just enter a number and click on verify uh, and, uh, and and that request can go to the national authority or you know whatever that may be and they can verify that yes this is indeed a valid number and if it's not then it will come up uh, as, as invalid uh, so that's that's really the only way that we can uh, at this at this stage verify uh, a particular uh, business. Um, so the, the 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 onus of verification in the absence of an API from the national registration authority um, uh, is, is is really on the on the person who's sitting at the post office counter uh, in terms of uh, how good he or she is uh, in, in in actually ascertaining um, the the quality of the document so is this document a fake is it an original you know um, does it have holograms and all of that kind of stuff so it is a very much a a physical inspection process if you may uh, that would have to be conducted by the post office uh, staff and that's exactly what you guys would be charging for um, so um, uh, that's the only way of doing it as I said in the absence of an API but I think as we as as, as, as we move forward uh, more and more countries will be able to introduce these things because none of this is rocket science um, and uh, you know all of these are things that would be able to help streamline uh, the entire uh, you know uh, business processes uh, for for every country all right, so thank you so. Um, I, I suggest everyone you can continue to post your questions in a Q&A module. And for those who just had those questions um, posed, um, if you feel you wanted to follow up, please continue to use the Q&A module to either indicate it's okay or you can follow up there as well. All right, so back to you. All right, thank you. Okay. So the white the the white label app module for e stamps uh, we we briefly discussed this yesterday as well and uh, so what we'll do is we're happy to provide a white label e stamp app module that can be embedded within existing app of the postal operators if they so wish uh, for seamless functionality uh, the look and feel here is a standard one but it could all be customized depending on the colors uh, and the branding of the respective post offices so uh, you know I mean all of that is possible and doable and and even uh, some of those, uh, you know, the first screen, we've got those uh, different items, the letter, the weight, uh, the same as a service. If, if there's any other parameter that, uh, that uh, if, you know, any, any postal operator would like to add, then that could be done too. Uh, so all, all customer payment is handled by the post operator, uh, postal operator's existing payment processor. Uh, so that's important. And, and, and we stressed that before as well, that we do not deal with the money aspect of things. So this is something that the post office would use their existing payment processors for. Uh, when you, when you, when you, once you've actually entered the basic information uh, in terms of the recipient's domain, uh, you are then uh, shown the screen, which is uh, screen number two, confirm details. Details. Uh, once you've actually confirmed the details, then before making the payment, uh, we can also um, embed any number uh, of uh, other requirements, regulatory requirements, be they uh, uh, custom data, be they uh, other other border regulations, uh, be they uh, you know parcel restrictions, anything else that basically would apply to a specific country. Uh, we could actually uh, ask them to fill out specific forms. That you know, can you please fill out this form? Uh, be it a declaration form form whatever uh, before they actually make that purchase and uh, uh, you know very important to stress that whilst post uh, would obviously have a much more uh, you know it would be a fairly more simple thing because they're primarily letters involved only uh, but when you talk about some courier companies then they would have uh, heavier requirements uh, both from a customs and other regulatory uh, 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 bodies so uh, we are able this 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 particular software can support a uh, multiple number of uh, forms that can then be appended uh, to this uh, you know to the app 
and that can uh, that would require to be completed uh, online uh, before uh, the payment page comes up so uh, insofar as a customs declaration is completed and if customs then for any reason decides to actually um, uh, invalidate that particular form they can basically reject it on the spot and the payment page would never come up uh, so again that has uh, uh, to do with uh, the, the National Customs Agency, we are able to provide an API uh, with the specific requirements and uh, we are, you know, all, all that we do at our end really would be to embed the form that they currently have or that they wish to have, uh, uh, you know, within our app and uh, that form needs to be completed by the user insofar as it's successfully completed uh, and, and properly completed then it is uh, uh, it, you know it could be validated by the respective customs or border agency authorities and uh, all of this will have to happen in real time which again is 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 is, is you know possible i'm sure and once that's done then they will be able to go on to the uh, payment page and make that payment and the e-stamp is then issued which is the last one so essentially what will then happen is if you think about it the e-stamp becomes extremely powerful because it can have all sorts of uh, declarations, all sorts of uh, custom uh, you know, regulatory requirements, etc. All of them embedded uh, within that one single QR code. So it's essentially a unified QR code for end-to-end uh, -end, uh, you know, uh, delivery of uh, parcels and letters uh, globally. Okay. Uh, so that that that's pretty much uh, the 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 end of the tech side of things. Uh, this is our, our mission, which we ran reviewed yesterday as well, and that's about a bit about me and my co-founder, who isn't here this this afternoon either. Uh, so so I would like to uh, ask anyone if they've got any specific questions with regards to the architecture, uh, so that I could answer those questions, please. Thank you. So we we do have two questions in the q a box and actually their business questions interestingly enough today um so it's sure. okay uh, manoj from um india post is asking the what well, he's suggesting the idea of geomain is very good but to implement it postal departments have to invest to change hardware and software at the post office so the monetary gain to postal departments or companies through geomain sales can only fund the investment they have to make. What can you say on this? Excuse me. Okay. Uh, what I would say is that uh, from a hardware and software perspective, right? Let's actually analyze this uh, in you know in two in two phases. One is the one is the customer or the consumer facing hardware and software and the other is really uh, you know the back office or the you know sorting hardware and software so with respect to the uh, consumer side as i showed you uh, the the postal module so we've got that available on SaaS. so insofar as you have a a connected device in the post office and i believe most uh, most post offices do have uh, in you know internet connectivity and they do have connected devices so insofar as if they can access a secure browser uh, then then there is no additional hardware uh, that is required for you to actually start offering uh, geomains uh, um, right because the software is as I said it's available as a service and the hardware if you've got so 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 maybe I would like to ask uh, uh, the question uh, to you that if you could tell me uh, whether you've got actually uh, devices that are internet connected at every post office in India. All right, so while we wait for that response, um, Mohan is asking, he didn't, he, he didn't say where he's from, what is the revenue model for post offices which are collecting transaction charges? Okay. Um, as you saw in the as you saw in the module uh, demo that I did, uh, we've got a whole variety of services that uh, uh, become available once you become a geomain registrar. So you've got the sale of geomain names, you've got renewal, you've got term extension, you've got category change, you've got verification, uh, all these things. So. Uh, 
I think we did go over the pricing uh, yesterday. So for, for business category geomains, uh, it is $9.99 per year, minimum of two year registration. So that means the, the actual invoice would be about $19.98. Um, and uh, postal operators can uh, you know, earn a 25% commission on that. Um, so uh, if you if somebody comes in and renews it for say 10 years, then that's uh, basically uh, let's say that that would be close to $100. Uh, so that would then work out to almost $25 in commission to the postal operators. Uh, if you if if they wish to upgrade category, then of course there's a fee for that as well, uh, because every time that you do a category change, it's actually considered as a new registration and uh, any any prior. Uh, payment that you have made uh, for that geomain is then basically forfeited uh, because it's a brand new category. And the reason for that uh, is because uh, business category geomains are actually premium. Uh, you're able to serve advertising on it. They have more and more features. So we do not want people to, to start registering business, uh, uh, to start registering personal geomains and then using it for business uh, purposes. So this again is something that would help. Uh, I think what Marianne asked uh, previously that, you know, how are we able to identify this? So, um, uh, you know, in, in in, I think more more often than not, uh, businesses would be compelled to go and register a business category geomain if they are carrying on business activities. So um, uh, at this moment in time, I believe one of the problems is that we have individuals who are uh, uh, conducting businesses, uh, right, but they're able to do it under under their own personal ID and uh, under their own personal uh, names and uh, you know whatever. So. Um, with with all these different services the most important we believe over a period of time excuse me will actually become the advertising uh, we all know that you know google is an advertising company uh, you know they make billions in revenues from advertising um, and uh, post offices can actually become you know part of a similar solution i you know geomain and by virtue of that if the advertising on the geo pages uh, uh, you know becomes a successful which you believe it will over a period of time uh, then then that is a significant amount of revenue that will come in and 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 and, and perhaps uh, I, I i personally believe that revenue from advertising will will in the next three or four years uh, overshadow revenue from uh, the sales of uh, geomain names themselves uh, uh, primarily because advertising is, uh, is, is such a compelling uh, value proposition for businesses. And we've kept it at a very, very uh, fair pricing. And uh, our campaigns are unlike uh, existing advertiser, which is available. It's not contextual. Uh, so there are a lot of other uh, new things we are coming up with on the advertising side of things. So we feel that this is something that will take off uh, significantly. So. The revenue split is, as I said, uh, you know, 25% in favor of post. Um, and uh, in terms of, you know, how much how much revenue post can expect really depends on the number of businesses, the population of the country, and and several other factors, and also how well you guys, uh, you know, post are, are able to promote uh, geomains. Uh, so, insofar as insofar as if you are able to promote them, uh, you know, in an effective manner, then I think the adoption can be significantly higher, and, and that will result in significantly higher revenues. All right, thank you. So we have right, three, so we have three questions, questions. That, um, related to e stamps. I've, I think I will ask mm -hmm. them all together because they all seem to relate to each other. So the first one, what what exactly is an e stamp? Right, so that's question one. And then the relationship, I think there's another question and that will be helpful. Um, for an anonymous attendee, um, may I know if the e-stamp is to be generated as a QR code or an image of a physical stamp? What are the available securities to prevent sure. unlawful reproduction of the e-stamp? And then um, relatedly, a physical stamp has a lifespan before being taken out of the counter, could that be achieved for the e stamp as well? So, three e stamps. Okay. Um, okay. I hope I don't forget those questions. So, I might have to ask you to repeat them. So, the first question was what was an e stamp? Uh, in short, an e stamp is really a QR code representation of a, uh, of a specific uh, 
uh, um, a transaction which relates to a parcel or postal item, be it a letter being sent from a sender to a recipient, both of whom have a GeoMain address or GeoMain ID. Uh, so that that e-stamp is really just a QR code. Uh, the reason it's a QR code is because it's a digital identity um, and it's the fastest way of being able to sort a letter uh, as compared to OCR technology, which currently has been in use for over two decades by post offices, if not more actually. Um, and, and, and QR codes is really the future, but primarily because of the speed of processing uh, and the convenience uh, that, that, that they basically Basically bring um, so that that I hope answers the first question in terms of what is the e-stamp. Uh, then the second question I believe was uh, uh, why is the e-stamp safer? Or sorry, so the, be the exact question. So, I could... so the second question was I think you may have addressed some of it. Is the e-stamp to be generated as a QR code or an image of a physical stamp? Which I think you just answered. But relatedly, what are the available security to prevent unlawful? reproduction of the e-stamp okay um i think we missed two other questions before this uh, unfortunately i i you know every time that i uh, i'm trying to scroll but i can't see those questions they seem no to no no anyway. I, I have a I have, i'm calling out all the questions have no fear i'm, I'm tracking them Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, so um, uh, the e stamps will be generated as a QR code, as we said, uh, as an image of a physical stamp. Well, there is a possibility, uh, you know, if I mean, if post offices wish to have, let's say, for example, a national monument, uh, we could embed an additional uh, image. Uh, so once a QR code is, uh, once I once the e stamp is actually uh, scanned, uh, then a specific uh, national uh, national monument uh, photo could actually be shown. Let's say if it's the country's national day, so for that entire week they could actually show that additional image. So we have been working on that on the side. It's not implemented as yet, but something that is doable. So if post offices really want to hold on to some level of nostalgia in terms of, uh, you know, having the, the, the old style of stamps where they've got different issues for different, uh, you know, throughout the year for different events, uh, then yes, I mean, you know, that 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 is possible to do however the, the, the there would be absolutely no utility per se of that particular image that would then be displayed uh you know alongside the uh, the the qr code um we could actually uh, have the qr code and that image uh, printed out side by side as well if so wished uh but the actual utility would only be of the qr code so i hope that answers that question then what are the available securities to prevent unlawful reproduction of the e stamp uh this is very interesting uh qr code stamps uh, you know, a handful of countries have launched them in Europe, and these are uh, there's a very um, uh, uh, distinct uh, difference between the existing uh, value QR code stamps and uh, our uh, QR code e stamps. So, value QR code stamps simply say that this is a value uh, stamp of uh, 50 pence, for example, or you know, 50 cents, whatever. And as long as I stick it on to a letter, that letter will get delivered if that is what the uh, postage is for that particular letter. Um, uh, and I could basically send it to anybody uh, whose, whose, whose address I scribble on the envelope. Uh, a QR code uh, of the E, or, or rather the E stamp, is very unique in that the E stamp is designed for a unique transaction. As I said, it is for a specific, from a specific sender to a specific recipient. So hypothetically, even if I were to steal a, uh, you know, let's say if I had a malware on your device and, and you and you bought a E stamp um, and I decided to basically steal that E stamp from you, uh, I could do nothing with it because no matter where I stick that E stamp, it would actually deliver to the recipient that you have chosen. I cannot have that E stamp uh, redirected to anyone else except the person or, or, or organization that you have generated that E stamp for. So um, there's absolutely no benefit in actually stealing an E stamp. And that in itself, we believe, is a, uh, is a major, um, uh, you know, uh, negative point uh, from all, uh, you know, for all thieves and hackers because they, they can do absolutely nothing with it. So I hope that that answers that question. What's the next question? The next question is a physical stamp has a lifespan before being taken out mm -hmm. of the counter. Can that be achieved for the e-stamp also? 
Uh, yes, a physical uh, stamp has a lifespan. So when you say a lifespan, I'm I'm assuming what you're you know the question you're asking is that I could, uh, which which you know I have done. You know I've I've gone into post offices. I've bought a bunch of stamps because I don't want to stand in queue all the time. So I just keep them in my wallet, and every time I want to send a letter, I I pull it out and I stick it and send it. Um, so uh, those those stamps pretty much have a lifespan of several years. Um, so in short, the 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 e stamp in itself, uh, basically we have actually limited the lifespan of the east uh, you know of, of the east stamp to about uh, 60 days uh, primarily for security reasons uh, so you can generate an east stamp and you and you and, and if you so choose you know you don't have to use it for 60 days uh, but after 60 days you will receive a notification to say that uh, this east stamp is now expiring would you like to renew it and if you like to renew it then you then you click on a renew button and you can renew it for another 60 days uh, so you could Hypothetically, you could do that perpetually if you so wish, but that just means that that you've got funds locked into an e-stamp uh, that that you're not using. All right, there's a, about five questions coming in. Um, Please keep them coming. Mohan, what about the processes like account rec reconciliation and payments to the okay. EU and dot post? Okay, uh, account reconciliation uh, because this is all uh, automated SaaS. Uh, there will be a uh, there'll be a real time billing where uh, I think I, I showed you that on the dashboard. We'll be able to see exactly all the sales that have been generated, and uh, we would be able to uh, we as Geomain would be able to see exactly uh, what is owed to us by the post offices. We would generate an invoice at the end of the month and send that to you electronically, and we would expect you to settle that within uh, uh, 50 days uh, by way of uh, bank wire transfer uh, to our account and the cycle will go on like that so uh, that's how that works so all of that is basically uh, going to be online uh, with uh, with very clear uh, trail and very clear visibility in terms of the number of geomains you sold what those geomains were who you sold them to what time you sold them from which ip address you sold them which post office you sold them and which post office teller sold them so all of that information will be available online all right asan asks again not saying where they're from uh, i believe this is, might be senegal though i could be wrong um what are the prerequisites for postal administration to use geobain technology the only prerequisites are that you guys must have internet connectivity and you must have a device uh i.e a computer uh, available at post offices because without having uh you know without being connected uh, to our servers, uh, you are not able to have access to the GeoMain module, and without that, you're not able to basically uh, use our technology. So, insofar as if you've got that connectivity, and we would uh, want a secure connectivity, which means we would insist on a on a, on uh, you know on a static IP uh, address uh, from where all requests will be coming in. Uh, so, insofar as that uh, you know as these two criteria are met, then uh, the rest of the stuff is very easy to basically uh, provision. So that's that's not an issue. Uh, feel free to get in touch with me on my email address which is on the presentation and i can walk you walk you through the steps and as i mentioned yesterday we are looking uh for uh, the uh, you know we we are looking for uh, uh postal operators to come in and run pilots with us and we'd be delighted uh, to basically run those pilots so you can see how easy this entire thing is all right mohammed actually mohammed he has two questions but they are one is actually a follow-up which is um Interesting. Mm -hmm. What can Geomain offer to the DOs, the designated operators, that will implement postal registered electronic mail service? His follow up is that he will be grateful the answer can be written. So, so what can Geomain offer to the DOs that will implement postal registered electronic mail service? Okay, I, I'm All right. not so sure yeah. I understand the question. Yes, yeah, so I'm, 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 I think that's a um, <clears throat> product that. Um, for some, I don't know. I don't say it's it's in the past, but there was a, um, po a, a electronic mailbox project that. Um, oh right, right, right. Okay, yeah. more like emails, right? Well, yeah. So that uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I guess uh, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, it's a secure mailbox, quote unquote, electronic mailbox. Okay. Okay. The okay. government okay. can send okay. transactions okay. and so on, that kind of thing. That is that right. right. considered okay. in, the, in the early two thousands and so on. Okay. Uh, excuse me. 
Uh, Mohammed, uh, there's something very exciting, but unfortunately, I'm not at liberty to 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 talk about that at the moment. But uh, there is something we are doing which is going to be far better than that. But it's still a few months away. Uh, so uh, my suggestion to you would be uh, sign up. Uh, you know, let's let's run a pilot, and uh, we'd be happy to get you to be one of the first to basically trial that out. That and that's again some mind blowing technology, uh, which will be launching uh, as as part of the entire human rally proposition. So that's all I can. I'm at liberty to speak at right now about that all right in the chat al fauzan who uh, i think he was here yesterday we did answer we did have this question asked and answered yesterday um but i will try and see if i can help again so he's asking what is the link between the universal digital id and the address thing and postcode units of the upu and what we said yesterday is that um the upu does not specifically pick we're winners and losers in this kind of discussion. Um, Geomain is a um, consultant committee member, dot post group member, and they're one of the, the wider postal sector players that are working with the UPU to um, develop standards, to develop um, or advise on policies and work on overall technology um, thinking uh, approaches and potentially, as you're seeing today, um, offer a solution to the post. So there's no, I wouldn't say there's no link, or I wouldn't say there is there is a link. I would just say that um, it, it's sort of a collaborative exercise that's working with the UPU as a whole, and GeoMains um, has has um, invested in, in partnering with the UPU to, to help the UPU with this addressing and um, postcode project um, that another unit in the UPU, the addressing unit actually is doing. Um, so I guess you would say to, um, you know, keep your eyes and ears open and reach out to both the UPU and Geomain to see what, how this is moving forward. Um, as I said, there's no specific, um, you know, Geomain is the solution or not the solution. It, it's sort of a working together to, to see how best we can do this. And as I said, they have something already ready to, to run. So feel free as opposed to, to contact them to explore these opportunities. So I think that's the best way I could explain that. Um, in terms of the other questions coming in, um, Rabbi, I don't know where um, this individual is from. Um, could e-stamp replace the postage paid for electronic letters? For example, bank statements, um, I think I, think, I think maybe bank account statements they're referring to. So sort of, yeah, so similar thinking where you have um, this sort of, you know, stamp, you know, I, I think you talked about that yesterday where they do this, um, Frank. You're talking about secure electronic mail, right? So um, uh, as I said, that is... Well, I don't know. This I, is basically... Well, I, well, I don't know because it's um, postage paid for electronic letters, which is interesting. So the electronic mail, there's no postage, right, obviously. Um, so I'm not sure if she's referring to, or she or he's referring to the, the idea of having um, banks sending out statements that attract postage costs. I don't know if that's what they're referring to. It's not too clear. Maybe the English is, um, is, is not. Can you clarify that, please, Robbie? Yeah. You want to type, it, you can type in the chat if, you, if it's too hard to type in the Q&A. All right. So we'll wait for that. Um, Yes, the postage paid for electronic letters. That's an interesting question. What's an, what's an electronic letter? All right, and then no further questions at this point. So until, let's see what, what comes up with uh, Rabbi's um, con, um, clarification, and we can, we can move on with that. Um, did, we get a, did we get a response from the gentleman from India about whether they've got nope. internet devices there? No, nope, no, so they haven't responded. And connect, so and connectivity. Perhaps, perhaps um, so if you could put your contact information in the chat, so then in case people may, may you know, some, they may want to in, um, speak directly to you, feel free to um, reach out to Sol at Sol at Geomain, but Sol put it in the chat uh, so that he yes. can um, answer any questions directly to you. And there was a question earlier about um, whether we get, you're getting the recordings and so on. Yes. Um, once our communications team is able to, um, to, to to help us with our our uploads, etc., 
we will be sharing the recordings on our YouTube channel. As a matter of fact, just let you know, yesterday's session has been posted already on the channel. So, and I put a link in the chat so you can um, go ahead and, and, and go to yesterday's session already, which is currently available. All right. I think, okay, uh, uh, yes, India Post systems are, are not directly exposed to open internet. Okay. If they're not exposed to the open internet, uh, it is still possible because they have, uh, you know, I, 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 I would imagine there must be some kind of connectivity to the uh, outside world, perhaps at a, at, at a secondary or a tertiary uh, layer. Uh, so uh, if, if that is the case, then uh, they, uh, as I showed in the architecture document, uh, we could have uh, some kind of a local registry provisioned uh, within uh, India's national borders uh, that could then be used for these purposes. And uh, mainly, if you if you really think about it, any and all services provided by registrars, i.e., Post India um, or, or or India Post uh, would uh, would be for Indian citizens or Indian businesses, right? So that by definition would be within national borders. Uh, so uh, it is possible for us, to, uh, as as shown in the architecture earlier, for us to actually have that software installed locally uh, on on servers of uh, India Post or even uh, in you know the you know the NIC providers in India, uh, where all of that can then uh, remain within national borders. So I don't see much of a problem with that. But again, uh, I would be very happy uh, for uh, the gentleman to uh, send me an email and I'll be able to explain that, uh, it, you know, in a better way uh, with, with, with some more technical details. And uh, Mohan clarify some port opening and whitelisting of URLs may be required, which I... So basically, yes, that is the uh, yes, yes, configuration, yes. yeah. Yes, yes. This is, this is exactly what I said earlier that we would insist on a, a static IP address, uh, you know, for security reasons and and, and specific ports over which we'll be operating uh, would need to be opened up. Uh, but uh, in addition to that, you could also have a, a a local instance, if you may, right, deployed locally on your service, if you so wish, uh, that could then uh, upload all this, uh, th that could then handle all of this registration and then basically uh, upload the, uh, you know, uh, file to us in terms of what those activities were. All right, so um, someone is asking for your email ID in the Q&A, so I guess I'm not watching the chat, so I'll put it here as well. So in the Q&A, um, I've just shared your email ID with Manoj, but let everybody know that um, Hugh actually posted, I'm just letting you know, so he posted only to the to the panelists. So Hugh posted to everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. So Hugh posted your email, sol at geomain.com. Okay, thank you, Hugh. I posted to everyone. Um, so that's at 12.23 p.m. in the chat. So you can just scroll up to 12.23 p.m. Um, well, that's our time, I should say. So 23 minutes past the hour um, and for most people. All right. Um, we have just about four minutes left um, in this session. Do we have some so more questions? Sir? Right now, there are no right more now, there are questions. questions. Um, and Rabi has not clarified the question about electronic letters, so I don't right, know okay. how we can answer that without further clarification. So Rabi, if you're listening, um, you have a couple of minutes left to clarify exactly what you mean by postage paid for electronic letters. What does that mean exactly? Um, and in the meantime, um, the the response, the responses, I think, have been pretty clear. Um, so, do you have any final comments or, or words that you'd like to share um, with, with those who have been here today? As you know, this is a more technical audience, so maybe you could um, address. Yes, that. Um, yes, I would basically like to invite everybody uh, to uh, come in and 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 you know uh, do this pilot with us. Um, I think that over a period of time. Um, being, being the optimist that I am, I think that eventually the revenues that will be coming in from uh, becoming a GeoMain partner uh, would be fairly significant. And it is something that even I believe some post offices would be able to uh, to, to actually uh, stop living off the subsidies, the government subsidies, and they could become uh, uh, you know self-sufficient uh, enterprises on their you know in in their own right. Um, uh, and all of this is uh, is, is is SAS uh, uh, SAS which is software as a service. It is something 
something that is uh, available if you, you know it can be set up in a very short period of time as i said the only requirements are we need a static ip we need post offices uh, that actually become registrars to have a uh, internet uh, connected uh, device uh, and a secure browser through which they can access the service and uh, we are more than happy to work with uh, all postal operators everywhere to get this going and uh, it is it is really those those post offices I believe that are uh, innovators uh, you know who who, who can uh, come in as, as as pioneers of this service and uh, I I I do feel that uh, based on the interest that we are getting from even the major players for that matter uh, this is something that will be uh, adopted over a period of time and uh, geomains will become the default address uh, we hope as uh, you know uh, which is our goal uh, by the year 2027. Okie doke. Um, thank you very much, so, and I'm not seeing any further requests for clarification um, or questions. So as, as we said, soul at geomain.com is the address. If you have any further questions, anything you wanted to clarify in, in any in writing, anything you would like to, to get more information on, please do reach out to Geomain directly and not on this Anything commercial or anything like that, I would prefer you to not use this um, the UPU channel to do that. Um, we are just facilitating the, the the webinar. Anything beyond that, reach out directly to Geomain um, at soul at geomain .com to facilitate any further discussions. Um, so I think that's about it. Not seeing any more questions. I've waited here. So let's see. We we'll connect through email, right? So that's fine. Good. So. I think that's about it. So thank you very much um, for Wait. joining us today. Um, do enjoy the rest of your morning, your evening, your, your night, wherever you are in the world. And I really appreciate um, all of those who joined us the last two days on our, our webinar series and, and, and talking and engaging with Geomain, our dot post associate group member, as well as a consultative committee member, the UPU. And um, feel free to reach out to us at dot post. Um, you can contact us at secretariat at info.post or look at info.post for more information about what dot post offers. And we look forward to offering you more webinars in the next few months. So with that, I just um, want to wish you bye-bye. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you all. And hope to see you guys soon. And please reach out to me. Bye, Have everyone. a great day.